Hey, everybody, welcome back to Silver and Black today on this Thursday. And today we have a best of episode for you. For a lot of you viewers or listeners that haven't been around for the eight seasons now we're going into that the show's been around, including when it started on the radio in Las Vegas on CBS Sports Radio. We have a bunch of interviews, great stuff, everybody from Cliff Branch uh, to to Mark Davis, to everybody. So, so we, what we would do today was... Uh, since Mo and I are just doing one show per week now up until camp later in July, I wanted to share with you some of these older shows with some of these players we talked to. We have some more of these coming up the rest of the way. Just to give you some Raiders content, yes, there's stuff to talk about, but you know this is vacation time. Mo and I are down to once a week as we get ready for the season. But I wanted to share this interview from November 25th, 2018, with Swervin Mervin Fernandez. If you're a younger Raider fan, if you haven't heard of Mervin Fernandez, go check it out. I know a lot of you Raider fans out there are familiar with him and loved his play with the Raiders. Of course, he also had a great career in Canada. And so I'm going to play this one for you. It was recorded on my birthday. Yes, it was my birthday, this show, but we're going to get into that here. So I wanted to bring you this interview with Swervin Mervin Fernandez on the best of Silver and Black today. And uh, we will see you with a brand new show on Tuesday. Don't forget, if you want to call in for the Raider Nation mailbag, it's 702-802, excuse me, 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869, a little vacation brain. But anyway, here is our interview with Mervin Fernandez from November 25th, 2018 on the best of Silver and Black Today. This is Cliff Branch, former of the Oakland Raiders, three-time Super Bowl champ, four-time Pro Bowl, and you listen to the Silver and Black Show. All right, Cliff Branch, one of course, one of the great Raider legends at wide receiver, a man who should be in the Hall of Fame along with Tom Flores, and a player who played at least one year with Tom Flores and is also littered all over the um, record book for the Raiders, and we'll talk to him about that here in a second. Uh, and we're really uh, happy to be joined now on the attorney Michael Troiano newsmaker line by uh, my favorite nickname of all time, Swervin Mervin Fernandez, wide receiver with the Raiders from 87 to 92. Mervin, thanks for joining us here this morning on Silver and Black Today. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? We're doing great. We're doing good. Uh, obviously, uh, Raider Nation has had, had a mixed bag this year uh, with the record. Uh, Mervin, but let's start talking first about um, your your career uh, with the Silver and Black because uh, you, you had just amazing uh, time. You come into the league, you first came out of uh, San Jose State, uh, and how you got there. I wish we had time to talk about your whole journey because it's it's fascinating. But you go to San Jose State, uh, and I'm sure you know who Lawrence Fan is, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's still there. He's still there, man. And I used to when I worked at UNLV, Lawrence used to bake all the time, right? And he was phenomenal. Yeah. But what what a great guy. But anyway, San Jose <laughs> State, you go play in Canada, and then in 1987, because the Raiders had drafted and Al Davis had drafted your rights, I think in the tenth round. Um, right, you that's correct. You joined the Raiders for Tom Flores' last year in 1987. Uh -huh. Um, and then, uh, Art Shell gets the job, uh, or no, sorry, Mark, Sh um, uh, Mike Shanahan came in. Um, and then yeah. you, you, you were there through some great years, including the 1990 year, but talk about getting to the Raiders, that journey and what it meant to you when you finally got there and you were inside the silver and black as an organization. Well, it was, it was pretty amazing that, uh, I was still in Canada and, uh, I still had. Uh, three or four years on my contract and that they they wanted me that bad that they would draft me and use the draft but you know back then the draft was a few more rounds and even in the 10th round it's still a draft pick so they used that just to hold my rights and and get me there and then once I got there uh you know it was a little bit of adjustment as far as uh being stationary on the line and that kind of stuff and you know, also when I got there, they still had some of the greats. Like, uh, they were at the end of their careers, but you know, Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes and you know those those Mike Davis and Rod Martin were still on the defense. So when I walked out on the field, they're like, "Who's this Canadian guy?" Well, <laughs> hey man, first of all, I'm not Canadian. Okay? <laughs> 
I am an American to this day, you know, going to the States. And, you know, then football takes over and you just start uh, doing what you know. What, what was it like to um, playing in the Bay Area in college and then to, to finally put on the silver and black, albeit in L.A.? It was still it's still the Raiders. And, and I'm sure you were familiar with with what that entailed to go out there and finally get to the NFL. But to wear that silver and black, was it was it everything you had hoped it would be? It was pretty surreal. I mean, you know, just just walking out on that field and being in an NFL and then walking out there in a, in a Raider uniform and, you know, being from the Bay Area, going being from grade school to high school to junior college to college to, to the Raiders is, is uh, you know, that was a dream come true for me. I was, I was, I was home uh, the, all the way through and, you know, not too many guys get that opportunity to, to stay where the roots are and, you know, do all that stuff. And, you know, it was great. Well, and Mervin, you, when you get there, uh, you have some guys that you're playing with. And, and through the course of your Raider career, you get there, you have James Lofton there, right? Uh, and then you played with yeah. Willie Galt. And then you have the young little, the, the, the young buck, Tim Brown, comes in out of Notre Dame. Right. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and so you, you played with a lot of different guys. Talk about what that was like for you. Uh, the kind of mix and the chemistry you had on those teams, uh, especially at the wide receiver position. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We were a tight group. We had a lot of, you know, different games and things that we it would, it would keep it interesting out on the field. Like if you drop the ball. You know, you'd have to do 25 push-ups if you <laughs> dropped a touchdown. It was, we had bankers. We had, you know, all these different things. And we were just a really tight group. And then just to be out there and, and watch the guys do their things. I mean, so James Lofton's obviously in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Willie probably should be in there. Uh, yeah, Timmy's in there. And, you know, then, then on the other side, I got Marcus in the backfield. I got Bo in the backfield. And Eric Dickerson came through. Uh, uh, Bell came through. And then on the other side, I'm sitting here right now watching the Fox News and how he's on TV. I mean, it was just... <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. At the time, it wasn't like, oh, my God, this is how it is. Bo, they were just my teammates. But now it's like, wow, I really did play with some, some, uh, some great players. But, you know... It was uh, it was just doing my job at that time. Remember, we have some phenomenal fans that that seem to know everything there is to know about the Raiders and their history. And one of our fans yeah. wanted me to ask you about the time that Art Shell put you on blast for eating peanuts on the sideline. I'm not familiar with this story. <laughs> what, 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 what is really? what is this story? <laughs> really, we're gonna go there. Right now? <laughs> <laughs> that is a true story. So wind it down my career with the Raiders. I am uh, just probably one of the last games of the season, if not the last game. Uh, it's probably about late in the fourth quarter. Me and Todd Marinovich been sitting on the bench the whole time, not even getting a sniff in the game. And, uh, you know, we're just standing there kind of goofing off, and, you know, game's almost over. We're eating peanuts or whatever. And uh, I don't know if it was a hard shell or a biscuit. Look back and... Uh, and uh, I think they were going to put me in the game, and I was eating peanuts. And uh, so I, I, my, my understanding is they took that as I wasn't ready to play. <laughs> oh, man. I was eating peanuts. Yeah. Like, you, said, you don't see people eating peanuts in some plus seats <laughs> on the field in today's game. But anyways, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> well, you know, we did see Mark Sanchez eating a hot dog so on I the sideline in Oakland. my last check yeah. from the Raiders, and I look on there, and it's missing $5,000. So I call call up to the Raiders and and uh, they give me art and art and I ask art what's the five dollars for? You know what it's for? I was like I really don't. What is it for? It's eating peanuts on the side. Oh like, no way! Did you you find me five thousand dollars? Wow! Peanuts on the sidelines and yeah, true that's story. it. That's but, it. Yeah. No love lost. I mean, it is what it is. Sure, and I I know how active you are with uh, the Raider alumni, and you do a lot of golf tournaments. Yeah. Now you talked sure. about all those great players that you played with, Mervin, but you yourself had a stellar career with the Raiders. I mean, you rank still fourth in yards per catch with eighteen yards per catch, which is astounding. Mm -hmm. uh, ninth in overall receiving, seventeenth in receptions. 
Um, and, and playing during that time with who you played with and your own individual performance, and then you finished up going back to the, the CFL, um, how did the, how did that CFL, uh, period prepare you for the NFL so that when you walked in, you could achieve the success that you did with the Raiders? Well, I think it's just being active and, and, and staying, you know, relevant, you know, running, running routes, catching balls, uh, you know, we had success in the CFL and a lot of touchdowns, ran a lot of different routes, and you know that just kept me uh, uh, prepared for the next level. And like I said earlier, once you once you get in that situation, the football just seems to take over, and your ability takes over. And obviously, they had different players and different quarterbacks, but football is still football, no matter which team you go to. Then you know you just try to play to your strengths and, and do the best you can. And, you know what we're at success with it and uh you know the rest is history the rest is the secret <laughs> because it seems like it's been a long time since i've been on that <laughs> Well, and again, we're talking to uh, Mervin Fernandez, of course, from the Raiders, 87 to 92. Now, Mervin, well, we have a couple minutes left with you, uh, and then we'll let you back to your Sunday. But a question I want to ask you is this year with the Raiders, you had just one year really with the Raiders where you guys had, uh, I would say, a subpar record, if you want to call it that. Not Nothing is as, as dire as it's been for the Raiders this year. But yeah. you did go through coaching changes. Talk about what it's like for a roster to go through the change that they've seen this year in Oakland under John Gruden. Well, I'm sure for the guys, it's pretty frustrating, and it's difficult, you know, when when a new coach comes in because he wants to bring his new people in, and uh, you know, they they pretty much change most of the plays to what they want, and the the vibe is different, you know, and you know, when when new coaches come in, players go out, coaches go out, and. You know, you, you have to get back in the sink when when you're able to be with the coach for a while, and you know you you got that program down like you know the back of your hand. You don't even think about it. Um, and I think it just it it, it uh, your production is 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 better when you're in a comfortable position. You know, I'll give a short example of Alex Smith at the Forty Nine ers what a great quarterback he is, and he's done some great things over the years, even with the Niners. But every year, that man had a new playbook. Yeah, and for a quarterback, you know, that's tough. I need to learn my plays and a couple other things, but I don't actually have to know everybody's position and where everybody's going to be in this read and that read, and you know, I have my stuff to do. But could you imagine uh, you you getting a new script how you do your job every single year? And meanwhile, it's all being videotaped. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, Mervin, listen, man, we, we ran out of time. I, I'll have you on again because there is, there is a lot more we want to talk to you about, but we certainly appreciate okay. you taking time out of your Sunday. Thank you. And uh, anytime you call me, I'll be there. All right. Thanks, thanks Mervin. Mervin. Again, Swerving Mervin Fernandez, great Riders, Raiders wide receiver. We'll be back here on Silver and Black today on CBS Sports Radio, 1140 AM. All right. There you have it. Interview back. Yes. Different co host, different studio, different time. Obviously, the 2018 Raiders, much different era. But uh, the the interview with Fernandez, great stuff. I know he comes around for a lot of the Raider alumni days and things like that. So if you ever get a chance to meet Mervin, good dude, and we enjoyed having him on the show. We'll have to get him back on. It's been a bit of a time, uh, obviously, since 2018, which is the interview you just heard. But we'll check out if he's available, and get him back on the show. I know a lot of you have reached out to us. We appreciate the recommendations on what you'd like to hear on the show. We asked you, hey, who would you like to hear from? And a lot of you, of course, say former players. You want to catch up with them. Uh, everybody from all of the great ones to some of the less known you know, people you grew up with or you just want to hear from and see how they're doing. So we'll do that, and we have lots of that stuff coming up in the season ahead. All right, we're going to check out for this Thursday – but we will see you again, and you'll hear us on Tuesday. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. Even if you're a YouTube viewer, do us a favor. Just go ahead and get there. Subscribe to Silver and Black today wherever you get your audio. We would appreciate that. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button. Also hit subscribe and, very importantly, the notifications bell. Until next time, for our producer, Mike Robbie, for Mo Moten, I am Scott Colbranson. This has been the best of Silver and Black Today. We'll see you on Tuesday.